So first off, uh, I wanted to welcome everyone uh, to the Classroom of the Future webinar. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for taking the time to join us here today. Um, we're going to be going over a few things. Um, got the agenda up here. Um, first off, uh, I'm going to be presenting about MicroK12, our company, uh, who we are, and how MicroK12 is helping shape the future of the classroom. Next, I'm going to hand things over to Julie, and she's going to do the Promethean portion um, of this webinar, talking about some of the key technology you're going to be seeing in the classroom of the future. And finally, we're going to end things off with our Q&A to answer any questions that you might have. Now, before I go into my portion of the webinar, before we do our introductions, uh, just a quick announcement. Originally, our uh, Promethean host, uh, Zan Roberti, was scheduled to appear, but she is not being able, she's not able to come today due to a family emergency. Um, she had a flight to California, so hoping everything is okay with her, but we have an amazing guest host. Julie Porter has stepped up to the plate, uh, and she's going to be doing the Promethean portion. Julie, do you want to introduce yourself, talk about yourself a little bit? Oh, sure. Hi, I'm Julie Porter, and uh, I taught K through eight music in Denver, Colorado, and then uh, joined Promethean just about six years ago. And uh, I'm the music art theater person, so um, but also have a deep and abiding love for technology. I used an old Promethean board in my classroom, and now I get to go around and teach teachers how to use these wonderful creatures. So I'll be showing you lots of that. Awesome. Thank you so much, Julie. That's, that's really, really cool. And uh, I guess I'll introduce myself now. Um, I'm Jackson Fair, as you can probably see. Um, I'm the digital marketing specialist here at MicroK12. Uh, I've been with the company coming on two years. And so I joined right around when the pandemic hit. So it's been, yeah, it's been kind of a interesting, uh, really cool, in fact, to just see everyone come together and really tackle these challenges as a community. Um, I just thought seeing everyone, seeing the best of what, you know, this industry has to offer. It's just been really, really cool. So moving on, talk about a little bit about uh, Micro K12. Now, as a company, we're on the cutting edge. We are technology driven. We are education focused. And we've been here since 1982. Now, what do these all mean? Technology driven, that means we're going out and we're finding the best technology in the market and we're bringing it to you. We're education focused, which means we're not going out selling to you know, other verticals. We are entirely focused on K through 12 and getting you the solutions that you need. And we've been in it since 1982, which means we know what we're doing. We're experienced. We're knowledgeable. Um, we have, I think, between all of our sales reps, an average of nine years of experience. And together with that experience, we also have our services. Uh, this is something that I really want to highlight in this webinar. We provide um, pretty much industry leading white glove networking and repair services. Sorry, let me just Get my notes here. Um, our white glove services include enrollment, asset tagging, uh, cart configuration, and different shipping options. Uh, network includes E-rate, network audit, security, which is a big one I also want to highlight. Many of you have probably heard about the ransomware attacks that have been happening. It's one of the fastest growing security threats in the education industry. That is something we are experts in. And if you want... Uh, to strengthen your school against those kind of attacks, that's something that we can help you with. Um, so please reach out um, if you want that. We also do managed services and much, much more. And then finally, we do repair services. So even after you've got your rollout, we're there to provide services um, if something breaks, if something goes wrong. And taking together that experience, that knowledgeable team, those white glove network and repair service, that makes us a company that's built for what's next. And because we're built for what's, what's next, we're a leader in not just the Pacific Northwest, um, but the industry as a whole. Now, what does that mean to be a leader? That means we're supporting your district. 
we're building those strong relations with you and we're making sure we're, we're responsive and we're providing exceptional service. We're also creating opportunities, not just for students and those positive learning outcomes, but for the community as a whole. Um, if there's anything that you need from us, please ask. If you have any resource fairs, community events, we wanna be there fostering that community and helping you out. So that's a little bit about what we do. We also do an event called Tech Fest, which I'll touch a little bit later on in the webinar after Julie's portion. Um, but that's an opportunity for, you know, the district administrators and um, those people who want to network and, you know, get more um, out of the education technology space. Uh, switching gears here a little bit, how does MicroK12 fit into the classroom of the future? What we do as a company is we augment innovation. We take the latest technology, we pair it with our industry leading services, and that leads to improved outcomes for students. We like to think of it as a cart to quote and beyond. So even after your rollout, we're taking care of you and we're providing those services. We're going above and beyond. Um, we consider ourselves the expert in all things education technology. We're going out there, we're finding the best, we're bringing it to you and we're getting those solutions tailored to your needs. Now, all together, that makes, that makes it so we're prepared to make your classroom the classroom of the future. And uh, that's pretty much it. So thank you so much uh, for that portion. For listening to my portion of the webinar and I'm gonna kick things over to Julie. Cool, Jackson. And while you're kicking it, um, do you wanna send out that one polling question about what, their, what the front of the room solution is that all of our participants are using? And I'll switch over here. Yeah, of course. So we just want a little bit of information uh, what you guys are using. So I'll leave that up in the, for a few seconds. Oh, it's gonna make me answer before I can switch. There we go. Jackson, have you learned anything from the poll? Yeah, I was gonna leave it open for a few more seconds, but I think we got, okay. I think we got a few answers. So it looks like we got projectors, interactive flat panels, and there's some people who have a combination of both. So I'm gonna go Great. ahead and close the poll. Okay, so here we go. Um, again, I'm Julie Porter, I am from Promethean. So we're gonna talk about how Promethean fits into the classroom of the future. And I have three I words here for you, integrate, interact, inspire. Keep those in mind because there's gonna be a quiz. Just kidding. Um, they gave me a quote to use, every student can learn just not on the same day or in the same way. And basically the pandemic taught us a lot of things that are kind of pointing out where the classroom of the future might go. But one of the things we already knew this, um, but it definitely got, accentuated with the pandemic is that students each learn differently, just like we do. And so the classroom of the future needs to be able to address each student where they're at and what their particular needs are. So through this pandemic, as the world turned upside down and particularly in education here at Promethean, integrate, we thought of you. So we actually looked at what we have as offerings in hardware and software and discovered we already had in place a lot of things that came in very handy in doing remote 
distance and even hybrid learning. So we kind of worked with those and looked at them. We even produced a hybrid remote learning manual, which I really like it because it's not just here's how you use Promethean. Um, it basically talked a lot about what are effective ways to teach remotely, what is, you know, based on the brain science and um, brain science is like one of my little hobbies here. So it'll come up a lot in this. So we were there. We were there for you. So um, we did, we typically go around and do PD for teachers on site. Of course, we couldn't do that during most of the pandemic. So we figured out how to do things remotely. And just like this webinar is being done with sharing my panel screen, but also letting you see me in front of the panel, turns out to be a really great way to do PD. And so we were helping schools kind of implement that sort of setup with their students. And it was pretty exciting to think. Um, so IT folks, we have a lot of IT on this, on this webinar. And um, one of the things we realized early in the pandemic was, oh my goodness, you got so slammed with work that you had to do. Now you have all these students on devices. How do you connect them? How do you keep that going? So one of the things Promethean has really been focusing on is IT. First, we came up with a panel management system. So if your school has Promethean panels, there is an included system for managing them all from your office. You don't have to go and touch each panel to update them, to you could make them turn off at a particular time each day, all sorts of things you could do remotely. And then we realized, well, that might not be enough. And so we kind of increased our partnership with Radix, and we now offer a full Radix solution. And it's not even limited just to your panels. You could sign up for that solution through us. Apparently, we have the best price. And then you can actually include all of your other devices, Chromebooks, computers, whatever else you need to put into that panel, into that management system. And finally, Inspire, you inspired us. Um, watching what teachers and what tech directors and what IT and um, Donna Library Tech, you're my hero, um, what you all were doing to get through this pandemic, we found very inspiring. And um, it's very interesting that when the pandemic started, Across the U.S., about 28% of students were had one-to-one -one devices. Do you know what it is now? 80%. Uh, question, how do you spell that management system? Radix, R-A-D-I-X. So um, almost 80% of students now have one-to-one -one devices, and we're super hoping that it could get to 100%. Um, but with that, what does it mean? And I'm starting to see on Twitter and things, um, parents going, are they just going to go back to school and still be on screens? So there's also some um, public relations that need to happen here where we can really let parents know that these screens, it's not just kids staring at them with their mouths hanging open, that there's a big interactivity part of it that happens with these screens. And at Promethean, we're working all the time to develop ways to make those screens more creative, more interactive, not just something you stare at all day. So um, we also have a history of kind of getting organizations that are independent and asking them to do studies so we can see if we're on the right track. And the most recent we, one we did was a company called Forrester. And we asked them specifically, what do the economics look like if a school goes with Promethean panels? And what they found was IT tickets go way down. So they, they even put a number on it. You can have a 48% decline in IT tickets over five years, which which translates to a lot of money saved. Um, going from projectors to an interactive flat panel like we have here saves you a whole lot of money in bulb replacement. And as a teacher who taught with one of those projectors, I will say it's not just the cost of the bulbs, it's the cost of having to turn your lights off so the students can see this very dim image in the front of the classroom. Those bulbs start to go dimmer the second you first turn them on. These beautiful panels are gonna stay nice and lit up for uh, they're like 50,000 hours they're rated to and you do the math in a typical classroom that's 10 to 12 years before they'll 
should be any degradation at all. And then finally, going paperless. Because our panels allow you to send content directly to a cloud storage or to Google Classroom, to emails, however you need to do it, much less paper needs to be used. It can be a 54% reduction in print. So that's what the Forrester company came up with. So let's talk a little about this panel that is behind me. This is our element series. Um, I'm on a titanium. We have two different models, titanium and nickel. And um, I like to say they were designed well, we usually say they're designed from the ground up. What I like to say is we did science. So we actually brought in a bunch of teachers who had never used our stuff, put little LED lights on their fingers and tracked them. We gave them tasks to do that they had never done on our panels before and tracked where did they try to touch? Where did they try to look? And this panel was designed from the ground up from all of that science that we did. So here we go. As a result, we have some really cool features on this panel, starting with there's a unified menu. And what that means is everything you do on this panel starts from just one menu. We had a panel before that there were like secret hidden menus. You had to know where to find them, but everything comes from this one menu. And you can get it from the right side, from the bottom, or from the left side. So wherever the teacher happens to be standing, there's a menu right there and accessible. They don't have to stretch awkwardly to get to it or any of that. There's not one at the top because who really needs to be taller than five foot two? Answer, nobody. Um, we also have the ability to have multiple profiles on the panel. So if the teacher is sharing the panel, they can each have their own set of apps, their own Google storage or, or any kind of cloud storage connected. So we try to make it as easy for the teacher as possible. In addition, we are constantly listening to teachers and polling them about what they would like to have on a panel. And as a result, we came up with what we're calling the Promethean Essential Apps. From something as big and all encompassing as the whiteboard, which I'll show you in a little bit. It's an endless whiteboard. You can use it to take notes. You can save those notes. You can bring in images. There's a lot you can do with that. We have an annotate tool, which is probably the most popular tool and what it means is that a teacher on a Promethean panel can write over top of anything. So I'm in a PowerPoint right now. I could be showing something on my computer, could be on a web page, could be showing my doc cam, doesn't matter. That annotate tool is always there, always available. Similarly, I can take a screenshot of anything. So let's go ahead and look at that. Just hit my capture. It just took a screenshot of this entire slide and maybe I just want to go in and crop and show these people. Now watch what happens. It's going to pop it right into my whiteboard, which is going to mess up my next demonstration, but that's fine. There it is. Once it's in the whiteboard, I can write on it, resize it, do all sorts of things with it. Go back here to, um, in addition, I just swiped past them. We also have a timer and a spinner, and those have proved incredibly popular. It seems like a small thing. I was using a timer all the time as a teacher, and instead of a spinner, I had popsicle sticks. Um, teaching K through eight music, I had 24 different preps, which meant 24 little cans of popsicle sticks. If they got knocked over, I cried. It was bad. So spinners are fantastic for teachers, and they're they're for more than just calling on students, but we'll talk about that. We also offer this screen share app, and this allows you to mirror devices. Anything with a screen and an internet connection can be mirrored up on this panel, and you can actually show up to four devices at once. And so we've seen that kind of be used in two different ways. One is having students share their board up here or whatever they're working on, Chromebook, could be an iPad, could be a computer. It can be wirelessly cast up here. Think about group projects when you've got four different screens showing here and or showing the difference in what four different kiddos did. Um, the other neat thing about screen share is it most often can work whether you're on the same network or not because it goes through a website. So we have actually cast across the Atlantic Ocean and had it work. So, um, 
when you've got students at home, they can still cast their screen up here. They can present. I've heard in a lot of schools in other parts of the country, no more snow days because we can, we've learned how to interact with students from home. The other way we've seen screen share be used really successfully is just for the teacher. Like obviously you can connect a computer to this panel with cables, which is fine, but most teachers want to be able to roam around the room, be standing next to that kiddo that needs someone standing next to him. And if you are casting your computer, you still have all that capability. So it's up here, but you are out there. And um, in addition, this screen share has the ability to allow touchback for Macs or PCs. So any computer, you allow the touchback. And once you're up at the panel, it's showing your computer. There's no cords. You can still control it from up here. It's like magic. Okay. Um, now there's the panel itself does a whole lot. I'm gonna show you a little bit of it, but we also offer peripherals in case there's extra things you wanna do. We have a Promethean branded Chrome box, which is if you wanna make that panel into a complete Chrome environment, that's your guy. We also have an OPS, which is a kind of a little computer module that plugs into the side of the panel. And again, now you can make that panel be a complete Windows environment, totally up, up to you. And then with the pandemic, we actually came out with a webcam because so many teachers were doing what I'm doing right now. So there can be a webcam showing the teacher so the students can see the teacher's smiling face. And, um, and then because the panel can have apps on it, one of those apps you could have on the panel is Zoom or Teams or Google Meet, whatever the school would like to use. And then you can share out the panel screen just like I'm doing right now. So live lesson, we're gonna go back to my friend, the whiteboard here. Let's get rid of the picture that I added. Come on, go away, there we go. So we're gonna talk about the classroom of the future. Now, remember I told you there's gonna be a quiz. It's not really a quiz, but which of these four I words were the three that I mentioned? Was it integrated? Why, yes. How about inadequate? No, we didn't talk about inadequate. Interactive, absolutely. Inspired, yes. And so a teacher could, using this whiteboard, make up little activities just like that. We're, we like to call that one three truths and a lie. So the kids have to guess which is the one that's going to slide underneath because it's not true. Okay, so classroom of the future. Let's talk about the technology. Find my technology. Here's our laptop, that's gonna be around for sure. And again, I can connect it to the panel either with cables or with that screen share. Everybody recognize this guy? Those dot cams, I, I've seen teachers like, don't make me give up my dot cam. But one of the things that screen share can do is I can use screen share and cast my phone or a tablet right up to the screen. You can move around with that phone, aim it at things that the children are doing on paper or even at the kids themselves doing a presentation and it's all cast up here. So this little dot cam, we don't need it anymore much as they love it. And it's just not gonna leave, so that's fine. Okay. The annotate tool is super, super popular because again, you can annotate over anything. So where I've seen teachers be really happy with that, two different places. One is Google Slides, where up until now, we didn't really have a good way to annotate on Google Slides. Now we do. Um, also using online textbooks, a lot of those textbooks offer kind of an interactive pen and it doesn't work very well. It's usually, if it writes at all, it writes real jiggly. And as you can see, our little annotate tool writes nice and smooth and there's even a highlighter. So if I want to come up and highlight over, there's the sleeve, <laughs> I can do that. Screen capture just makes it so easy. I can take an easy screen screenshot of whatever I'm on. Again, works over top of anything else. 
Okay, I don't know about you, but when I was a teacher, I had so many lanyards. Um, and one of them was always a big stopwatch because a stopwatch is a very handy tool for a teacher to kind of keep things moving, let kids know how much time they have. We've got a timer built right into the, to the board. No more popsicle sticks. We've got a great spinner that will allow us to select students. And this whiteboard, the whiteboard is just my favorite. You can do lots of things with this. One of them is I can split the screen here. And now I could have kids writing in two different colors and they could be having a competition going, okay, there's Wally, there's Albert Einstein, see who else they know. Um, I'm old, I confess, I have no idea who Daryl is, but hopefully my kids would know. So that's a little bit of our whiteboard here and move things around. I can save this whiteboard. I could export it out as a PDF to send to my kiddos, put it in Google Classroom. I do wanna show a little bit what the screen share looks like. So again, screen share is already on the, on the panel. When I open it up through the unified menu, I get this little window here. I'm gonna take my handy little PC here with no cords on it. It is a free range PC. And I'm gonna go ahead and join my screen share app. I just have to put in six digits, 447816, put in my name, which is gonna be PC. And because it's a computer, I can enable touchback. So watch what happens. I'm gonna enter the waiting room. I got a little flag here that tells me I have someone in the waiting room. Here is the waiting room. I can have up to 39 devices and then I can choose up to four. I'm gonna choose that PC and share it. And the bright green line around the outside tells me that I have touchback enabled. So I can actually go ahead and open up Google Chrome. From my computer, here it comes, ta-da. And so even without any cables, I'm controlling everything. It's pretty great. Okay, we'll have, it, we'll have time for questions at the end for sure. If you wanna see any of those features live and in person, we can do that. Um, we also have two software platforms, starting with Active Inspire. Remember, Inspire was one of our words. Um, Active Inspire goes back years, and I use that in the classroom. I love it very, very much. It is computer software. It is included with the purchase of the panel, and there are no recurring fees, no kind of licensing fees or anything. As long as you're using a Promethean panel, you have Active Inspire. We also offer ClassFlow. So Active Inspire is a computer program. Program. It's designed to make this panel very interactive. You can make all kinds of cool things that the kids come up and tap or move or whatever you can think of. Um, Classflow is a virtual, it's an online program. So teachers just sign into their account from wherever they are. And students as well can join the class. You can send out polling questions. You can send out uh, videos. You can send out all sorts of things. And um, Classflow will keep track of everything the kids send back to you. So it's just a great way. It has been super popular through the pandemic because it was a way to involve the students at home in the lesson because they're actively participating and sending back answers and all of that. Okay, my favorite part of Promethean, professional development. That's what my team does. There are some 40 of us across the country and our whole job is to come in and make sure that your teachers know how to use this. Not only do we do a, an orientation in the beginning to walk them through everything, but we are available to them at any time for questions, for help. We also have an award-winning website, Learn Promethean, that has little courses that they could do online. It has videos, it has PDFs, it basically anything you might wanna know about Promethean. And then probably my favorite part is we have yearly events. We were doing online webinars, virtual PD long before the pandemic hit. And so it was no problem to keep on doing that. And so we have some big events. We just had Camp Promethean about 
two or three weeks ago, and it was a full day of free PD. So teachers can sign up for whatever courses or tracks of courses they want to do and go from there. We have one coming up. Um, steam forward and it's always in November and in September we have to actually we'll have a back to school night where we're going to give out lots of free resources to any teachers that attend so watch our social media for that um, unrivaled sport premier warranty we have a three-year on-site warranty that means in those three years if that panel goes bust and honestly very few of them have, um, but someone from Promethean will come with a new panel, take the old one away. So you don't have to figure out how to box that thing up and ship it. We handle that. The panel management that we mentioned, there's Radix, the R-A-D-I-X. And um, again, we have built-in management that is just included. Um, but if you want something a little more robust to handle all your devices and be able to do things like push particular apps out to, out to the teachers, Radix is your guy. There we go. So welcome to the future of learning. We're really excited to see where it's all going to go. And, you know, this pandemic has been a pain in the neck. But I feel like we've learned some things about what the learning can look like in the future. And um, I know there's going to be exciting things coming out from Promethean. And I hope you're all as excited as well. OK, Jackson, that's, oops, I see a question. Video annotation recording for later playback. Great question. So I used to recommend there is an app that you, there's lots of screen recording apps and I tested a bunch of them, found one that works really great on the panel. However, what I'm starting to do now is actually just start up like a little Zoom session with myself and record it. And it does a fantastic job of making a recording for, for students. So either way will work. Um, that Active Inspire software does have a screen recorder built into it. And um, it's pretty great. You don't even have to be recording Active Inspire. You start it within Active Inspire, minimize Active Inspire, and you can record whatever you're doing on your computer. And it will capture the video and the audio as well. So um, lots of options for that. OK, Jackson, going to hand it back to you. Awesome. That was amazing. I think I want a Promethean panel now. Not, not even just for yes, you do. the classroom, <laughs> just, like, just in my living room. Yeah, I, I won't mention that this is in my apartment. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. All right, here, let me start up my presentation again. Okay. And then we can go. So I got one more thing I want to talk about. And then we'll go to the Q&A if you guys have any more questions. And then we can get you guys going home. All right. So I alluded to this a little bit earlier, but I want to talk about TechFest. Whoopsie. Okay. Let's see. There we go. All righty. So when I talked a little bit about building community and making those connections, um, one of the things we do was you put on an event called TechFest. Some of you may be familiar with TechFest, some of you may not be familiar with TechFest, but it's our annual, annual education technology conference. We hold it every year. Last year we did it virtually, which was crazy and fun. Um, this year we're hoping to have it in person and we're fairly confident it will be. It's October 14th to Lalip, Washington, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. And we hope you guys can make it in our post webinar email. We're gonna send you guys an email um, with a survey you guys can fill out and we're all also include a sign up for tech fest um, and we i highly highly encourage you all to come it's a great event we get great feedback every year we got free sessions we got vendors we got everything promethean is even going to be there so if you want to learn more about promethean come to tech fest talk to their awesome reps um, that is all from me um, if you guys have any questions now is the time to ask and I'm going to go ahead and mention, um, Cade asked, there was a side-by-side -side picture in one of the slides, and, and I meant to show that to you. So um, 
I'll just talk through it. But um, all of the apps that show on the panel, you have the option to resize them. You could pin them to half of the screen or freely resize them however you want. And so you can show multiple apps all at, all at once. So I could have my whiteboard on half the screen, a YouTube video playing, um, maybe my Zoom kiddos showing up, whatever, whatever, however I wanna work it. It's absolutely doable. Julie, if you want to take over, you can go ahead and show that if you want. Okay, here we go. I don't think I don't think we we totally we don't we don't need the Q and A section. I think I think everybody knows. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's my whiteboard with that funky person there. And just by tapping the little button at the bottom there, I have just made it take over half the screen. And in fact, on this whiteboard, I think I had a little thing. There we go, with notes. So let's say I want my students to be taking notes over here on the whiteboard. Then I can open up a YouTube video. So here's one about decoding the human brain with robotic limbs. So it's playing over there. I just have the sound off so that we don't risk Zoom echoes and things, but in the classroom, it would have sound. Um, and then let's open up this map. So this map shows a town in the United Kingdom where they recently found what is being touted as the world's oldest human brain. It was found inside a skull and it was still like intact. And so they've been studying it. Oh, and it was 2,600 years old. So they've been studying it to see um, how different or the same it is from our own brains and they're finding it's much the same. I also don't wanna mislead you saying that we can't have sound during Zoom, we absolutely can. Um, it's a little bit little bit tricky because the, the panel is considered a mobile device. So the Zoom mobile app doesn't allow you to share internal sound, but um, I could do a couple things. I could play it and have my little headset pick it up. Or um, typically what I shall tell teachers is if they're gonna share a video, remotely with students. If they do it from their computer, you can just share the sound instantly and it, it works fantastic. So there's lots of different ways to get where you're going in this. But as you can see, my video's playing. While I'm doing that, I could annotate, I could take a screenshot. There's this cool little sculpture here. Probably wanna take a screenshot. Now I've got a circle over this guy, that's neat. That's so. Lots of things you can do with all those different tools. Awesome. All righty. Well, if we don't have any more questions, I um, believe we can let everybody go. Um, I just want to remind everyone, it's really quick here, that uh, we're going to be doing a post-webinar survey we're going to be sending out to you guys um three emails so thank you all for coming look out for that uh post event survey in your emails and look out for that uh tech fest sign up yeah thank you all for coming um get you out a little bit early thank you julie that presentation was amazing that was fantastic <laughs> thanks all righty i'm gonna go ahead and end the webinar um thank you guys bye-bye <laughs>